recording. Okay, so we're going to start a uh, multiplication matrix. It's not a hard lesson. Um, it is a long lesson on ingenuity. So hopefully I can kind of help you guys through some of this, um, what they're talking about, because like I said, it is a long lesson. Um, so let's go ahead and let's hop into what we're going to be working on or how this is going to be done today. So first thing, scalar. Vocabulary, what is it? What is a scalar? And a scalar is just a number, this should be something that's familiar, this word scalar, a number that you multiply. And in this case, we're talking about matrices. So I'm going to say multiply each element in a matrix by. So when I talk about a scalar, it's just a coefficient number. It's the number that's out in front. That's all a scalar. So this three is a scalar. This three here is a scalar. This three here is a scalar. This three here is a scalar. Whatever number it is that's out in front. So what do I mean by a scalar? How do I multiply each element? All you're doing is basically just distributing it to every single term in the matrix. So it doesn't matter the size of the shape of the matrix. It's going to every term. So this three is going to go to the two and to the negative one. So three times two is going to be six. Three times negative one is negative three. And that would be the matrix. And so that's going to be my matrix, in this case, D. Matrix D there. Um, very similarly, this three is going to each and every term in there. So I would end up with three times two is six. I would end up with 12 and three times six is 18. Notice the dimensions of the matrix stay the same. It doesn't change. So this was a one by three. It needs to stay in that same order. So my number two here would have been matrix C. And we keep continuing on here. And so, whoops. So as I go ahead and I move on to another one, let me grab some more colors here. Um, I have this three, again, it goes to each and every piece. So wherever the element is, it stays in that same location. So this is gonna be three times one is three, three times two is six, three times three is nine, three times four is 12. So there's the new matrix. So this is going to be letter A, and my last one here is going to be three again times each one of these. And it has to stay in the same location as the element you're multiplying it to. So this would give me then a negative three, a negative six. This is three times a negative three is negative nine. And this would give me a negative 12. And so this would be example B. So you're matching up B. Um, a multiplication problem with the solution. So that's the first thing you're going to be doing in this unit. It's just multiplying the scalars through. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to be given a matrix, two matrices actually, and you're going to be asked to multiply. So matrix multiplication. And in order to multiply matrix, you must have the column A has to equal the rows in matrix B. What does that mean? So must have column A equal rows in B. So if I have two matrix A times B, then the columns in A have to equal the rows in B. And the new dimensions will be the rows in A and the columns in B. That sounds super confusing, right? Okay, so let's look at it like this. Let's say I have matrix A and it is a three by two. And my matrix B is a two by four. Okay, so if I wanna multiply the two matrices together, if I wanna multiply A times B, then the dimensions I would be multiplying would be A is first, so the dimensions of A go first, order matters. So this would be a three by two times A, two by four. So in order to multiply, in order to multiply these, 
these values here have to be the same. They have to be the same. So this is the columns of matrix A, and this is the rows of matrix B. Remember, it's rows by column, rows by column. So again, that's what this piece is telling us here. The columns of A have to be the same as the rows of B. So those have to be the same. These are the same, which means I could multiply them. If I can multiply them, then the matrix, my solution, the matrix that I will end up with will have the dimensions. So my new matrix, these will be the new dimensions, will have the dimensions of a three by four. So I'll have the dimensions of a three by four. So as long as these are the same, then I can multiply these. And when I multiply them, I will end up with a three by four matrix. That's what the outer numbers are gonna tell me. What if I do B times A? What if I do B times A? Then my matrix B is a two by four, my matrix a is a three by two. So I would look at my inner dimensions. I look here, these are not the same, right? Not the same. So what that means is you cannot multiply B times A. I can multiply A times B, but I cannot do B times A. So you cannot multiply because these are not the same you cannot multiply b times a so it's not like addition where it has that commutative property so addition has we could do a plus b is the same as b plus a when we talk about multiplication of matrices that is not the case they are not commutative a times b is not the same as b times a as you can see here you can't even multiply b times a well, how do I multiply matrices? This is a whole new concept. So different than a scalar, just a single term out in front, easy to do, we just distribute to everything. Matrix multiplication. Okay, so how do I multiply this matrix? So first of all, can I multiply it? Let's check the dimensions. So here I have a two by three and I have my second matrix is a three by two. So can I multiply them? Yeah, because these are the same. So we can multiply them because they're the same. What are the dimensions of my new matrix gonna be? So the new dimensions are the two outer values. So what is the size of the resulting matrix? It would be a two by two. It's going to be a two by two. If you guys have any questions as I go through this, please, please, please ask me. Um, I will go through an example. I have another one um, that will multiply out. So this first one might be kind of a lot just to take in to see the patterns. Once you learn the concept, it won't be hard, I promise you. But it's just a lot to visually see and understand what's going on. So. The question then is, what is the product of the matrices? So the way that I do this is gonna be the same every time. What I mean by that is, this first matrix, I'm gonna focus on the rows. The first matrix, we always focus on the rows. My rows. So I kind of like to circle them so I know, okay, I'm focusing on rows on this one because the second one, we're gonna focus on the columns. And again, I always just kind of with my pencil, just kind of do a quick little circle around just so I don't make any mistakes. Um, when I multiply these, I'm going to kind of coordinate things just to help you guys visualize what numbers I'm using for what. So like this is just my scratch paper that I do. Like, and I always, even as like a teacher, I know what I'm doing, but I still like don't want to like accidentally multiply something wrong. So I just do my quick little circle. So I'm like, okay, these ones have to kind of line up this way. And we'll talk more about it. But that's just my preference, not that you have to, but it's usually the little mistakes that get you guys. 
Okay, so here's what happens. For my two by two matrix, we know it's gonna be a two by two. So here's gonna be my one, my two rows, and I'm gonna have two columns, right? Okay, so how do I get my row one, column one? Well, I use my row one, column one in my matrices. So here's the row I'm using. Here's the column one that I'm using. And what happens is I take these values and it's the first one goes with the first one, the middle one goes with the middle one, and this last one goes with the bottom. So it's almost like I'm taking it and I'm turning it to match up. So I'm taking this row and I'm turning it to match up next to them and then I'm gonna multiply them. So it's gonna look like this. It's gonna be my one there, one times my one. And then I'm gonna add everything in between. So then it's gonna be plus, and then I go to my zero times my negative one plus, it's always a plus in between. And then I'm gonna go one times my three. So that's for the first value for the row one, column one. Now my row one, column two goes my row one with my column two here. Same setup though. So what I mean by that is, I'm still gonna do one times my negative one, and then it's gonna be plus zero times my two, and then it's gonna be plus one times my four, plus one times my four here. So notice the patterns. So then I'm gonna to go to my row two and I'm gonna be using these values for each of them. So it's gonna go like this. It's gonna go two times my one plus negative one times my negative one plus my three times my three here. And then I do the same thing with my row two column two. So it's gonna be two times my negative one over here plus my negative one times my two plus my three times my four. And then I just need to clean it all up. I just need to clean it all up. So I end up with, this is just gonna be a zero. That makes it easy, that's a zero. So this is going to be, again, I like to just clean it up a little bit. I can write above it. Um, where's my block at? Oh, there it is. So I'm gonna have, this is just gonna be one plus three. This is gonna simplify to a negative one plus four. So this is gonna be two, a negative one, and a negative one makes that plus one, plus nine. Here I'm gonna have negative two, a negative one and a two is gonna give me another negative two plus 12. So I end up with one plus three is gonna give me my four. Negative one plus four is three. Two plus one plus nine is going to be 12. Negative two minus two is negative four plus 12 is gonna give me my eight. And there's my matrix solution. This is my two by two matrix. Was that overwhelming? Do you guys feel kind of okay? Definitely something new, I'm sure. Okay. Obviously watching the videos today will help you guys too um, as you go through it. Um, but I try to use the colors to help you guys visualize what's going on. Um, let me go ahead and flip. I do wanna talk about an identity matrix. So the identity matrix depends on the dimensions. It's always going to be a square matrix. 
So it's a dandy matrix is always square. So it's only going to be for a square matrix that you have your identity matrix. So I have my one and then look, my diagonals are gonna be one, one and everything else is zero. So I have my major diagonal here and everything else is zero. Here I have my major diagonal and everything else is zero. So if I have my identity matrix for I4, and I could go I5, like A, I6, I7, but if I wanna look at I4, just to kind of see, then I would have, it would be a four by four. So I3 is a three by three. So I know going across, it's gonna be one, two, three, four ones, and everything else would be zero. So this would be my zeros. This would be a zero, one, zero, 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 zero there, and then zero, zero, zero. So you can see that it has to have this diagonal of ones, and then you have everything else is your zeros there. So again, you can do it up to an Okay, so we have another multiplication. So it says to solve, solve. So let's practice what we just saw with our multiplication. So can I multiply is always the first question. So I look at the dimensions and I have a two by two times a two by two. Can I multiply these two? Yes, because these are the same. So I can multiply them, check. What are my new dimensions? So my new dimensions will still be a two by two because these outer numbers are both twos. Perfect. So I know I'm gonna end up with a two by two. So let's go ahead and let's see how this is gonna be done. So remember, first matrix is always going to be my rows. It's always going to be my rows. Never changes. First matrix is whatever one's first is always the rows. The second one, I use columns. And what do you guys notice about this right here? Yeah, it's your identity matrix. This right here is your identity matrix. It's a square matrix. This is a square matrix. This is a square matrix. This is our identity matrix. So what happens when we multiply matrix to the identity matrix? Some of you guys might have an idea with the word vocabulary of identity, but let's see what happens. Okay, so go ahead and we're gonna start our dimensions here. Let's work this out. So I'm going to have my first row here multiplied by my first column. So I'm gonna have three times one plus negative two times zero. Then I'm going to do three in my first row times my second column. So it's gonna be my first row, second column spot here. So it's going to be my three times zero plus my negative two times my one. Then I'm going to go to my second row, first column. So I'm going to have 19 times my one. plus this is gonna be eight times zero. So it's gonna be my eight times zero. And then my last one is gonna be my row two, column two. So it's gonna go 19 times zero plus eight times my one. So again, notice it's always a plus in between. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna simplify things. 
So usually I like to have like a pen or different colors I'm going through and doing that because if I'm writing on a pencil, then I could kind of go, okay, well, that's a zero. That's a zero. That's a zero. That's a zero. So it helps me clean up things. It just makes it quicker. Um, that's just my preference. So this is going to be a three. This is going to be a 19. This is a negative two. And this is an eight. So my answer is going to be three, negative two, 19 and eight. Huh, look, it is that matrix that we, our first matrix. I multiplied it by something and it ended up being itself. Hence why it's called the identity matrix. No matter what matrix I have multiplied by the identity, it's gonna end up with itself. So just a little visual and actually just more practice of multiplying. But so the identity matrix is gonna be a matrix. So whenever you multiply it, by as some matrix, you'll end up with that same matrix. Um, also note, so this is the matrix A times my identity. I could have flipped it. I could have done my identity times A and I would have still gotten that identity matrix. So there is a cumulative property with the identity matrix, not all multiplication though. So don't, don't confuse that. All right. Now my next one, it says, and I didn't realize that this was in today's, I should have prepped it ahead of time. It says matrix cal calculator and edgenuity. There is a calculator in edgenuity, in edgenuity to help you. So let me go ahead and let me show you that calculator and how it works. Um, let me go to internet. Um, and I didn't pull it up already. I'm so, so sorry. So let's go to a lesson in here because it'll pull up the calculator for me. Um, let me get all these things out of my way. So we are in matrices. Let's go to scalar. I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the assignment um, because when I look over here, you can see that there's calculators. So there's a graphing and a matrix calculator. Can you guys see the screen? Um, you probably can't see that pop-up though. Can you see the pop-up screen that just showed up or do I need to reshare that? There we go. Let me share it. Let's share it this way. Okay. So this is the pop-up. When I hit the calculator, this is the calculator that popped up. So you guys are seeing the calculator now, correct? Okay. So what happens with this is I want to, if you want to have multiply some matrix, um, so it says that we're going to have a calculator and I'm going to put for my matrix B, I can change, like this is going to be one dimension, or if I kind of highlight something like this, there's going to be, depending on what you highlight, maybe it's going to let me do it. Ah. I don't know why it's not one to me. Okay, let's see if I do it as a square. I don't know what it's doing. Work for me. Change. I want to change the dimensions. Let me change it. Let me. Hold on, it pulled because I my screen share stopped. I can't. Let me get back to it. Okay, I'm gonna share screen a little bit differently. So hopefully it will track everything that I do. Okay. I haven't done the calculator on this computer, so I don't know. Oh, there we go. Now it's changing it. So you should be able to go in and just select the boxes. I don't know what was why it wasn't doing that. Um, so I want to go ahead and I want to type in the values of the dimensions. So on my paper, you guys can't see right now, but I have um, for B, I have a 1.2. And I could just hit tab to the next number. I have a 1.4 tab. I have a 3.1 tab. I have a 2.2. .2. 1.1, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8, 5.9, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 
3.7. So as you guys are working, you can keep this up and you don't have to, if you want to have it up the whole time, like this shows as a separate page, a separate piece. Um, so you can go ahead and keep that up and convenient. 4.2, 6.7. Um, my matrix A that I'm using, matrix A is a one by three. So I would want to change the dimensions to a one by three. Oh, okay, that was, so I was highlighting from the first one and spreading it over and then I would do it and it wasn't doing it. So if I kind of move my icon and hit the last box and then select it, then it actually lets me um, choose that dimension size. So my dimensions for A is a 77, a 39 and a negative 33. Okay. So my question here that I have on my paper um, says, let me see if I can move this bar. You guys can see that too. So my question here says that I want to multiply A times B. So here's what I have in my calculator. This is my A that I put in. This is my B. And here's the calculator. So can you guys see both when I share my screen like this? You can see my paper and the calculator. I wish I can see what you guys can see. But it's not always the case. Um, okay, so when I go to my calculator, I wanna head, go ahead and I wanna do A times B. And if you look here, you have different operations. I can do A plus B. Oh, look. I can't add or subtract them because they're not the same dimensions. Remember adding and subtracting, they had to be the same. So it gave me an error. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. That wasn't something I could do. But if I wanna do A times B, then it gives me my results. And it tells me that I my answer is going to be 56.1, 12.2, 12 and 236. And so I would have my answers to put in for each of my values here. Um, what if I try to do B times A? Can't do it. So I could do A times B because this is a three by, sorry, one by three, and this is a three by three. So I have my threes in the center, but if I switch it, it would not work. And so you can see then that it can't do it. So I wanted to show you guys the calculator so you guys know it's there. It's a great resource. And a lot of the three by threes, um, you can still have it there for you guys to be able to do. We're gonna learn quite a few more of these operations here. So we're gonna definitely be coming back to this calculator. Otherwise, if you did them by hand, they take a lot of time. So this will make your life so much easier. Um, so practice with it, get used to it. Um, I recommend kind of staying focused in the edgenuity calculator because you can do these on graphing calculators. It's just not the calculator that you have right here as you're going through your work. And all the calculators are slightly different. So I think it's kind of not as good of a way for me to teach it to you guys, since you guys will all probably have different types of calculators, even if you have a graphing calculator. Um, if you guys have questions today, let me know. This is just all instruction. Tomorrow I'll go over problems from the assignment, which might help you guys even more, um, come up with some different examples and working through more stuff versus just a bunch of uh, foundational knowledge. So if you guys, again, have any questions, please, 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 please um, message me. Um, so I do have a question on when I was doing that, why did it not work with B times A? So when we did the calculator, I did A times B, but not B times A. So remember my A, my matrix A is a one by three and my matrix B was a three by three. So the dimensions in the middle are the same. So they could be multiplied. But if I switched it in and did B, times A, then I would have my three by three, and this would be times a one by three, and these are not the same. So I couldn't do it. And what happens with this, let me just kind of visually show you guys. So if I have my three by three, 
1.4, 3.1. I'm not going to write the whole thing out, but times my 77, 39, negative 33. So remember the first matrix, first matrix is always going to be the row. And the second one, we focus on the column. So when I go to multiply this, I don't have a number to match up with each one of these. And that's what I have to have. So I have my three numbers here, but I only have one number here. So I don't go just distribute that to each piece. They have to be, each of these elements have to have its own elements to multiply to. So when I look here, there's two elements and then it's multiplied, they each have their own element to be multiplied to. So that's why they have to have the same values. So here, I don't have three numbers here to multiply to match up with this one. Similarly here, I had three and three, three numbers and three numbers for each of them. So they have to have this a corresponding value for each one. Does that make sense? Um, any other questions? Any other questions? All right. If you guys come up with any more, make sure to reach out. Otherwise, you guys have a fabulous day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, dear. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye.